Brothers and sisters, it is an honor for me to be here with you this morning. I appreciate the timely message of Brother Gibson, as well as the inspiring music provided. I come here today at the request of President Thomas S. Monson. In his role as President of the Church, he also serves as the Chairman of the Board of Education, and I represent him and the other members of the Board here this morning. As of May 1, 2014, President Cecil O. Samuelson will have served as President of Brigham Young University for 11 years. When he was called to the presidency of this great university by President Gordon B. Hinckley, President Samuelson brought with him a wealth of church service and professional experiences that began with his missionary service in the North British Mission from 1961 to 1963. Since then, he has served well as Elders Quorum President, High Counselor, Stake President, Regional Representative, and member of the First Quorum of the Seventy, a calling he continued to hold as President of Brigham Young University until October 2011. In his professional life, President Samuelson was a physician, Vice President for Health Sci Sciences at the University of Utah, after serving as a professor of medicine and dean of the School of Medicine at the university, and was senior vice president of Intermountain Healthcare at the time of his call as a general authority of the church. President Samuelson has served this institution with great distinction, and it is important for the faculty, staff, students, and supporters of this university to know that the First Presidency, Quorum of the Twelve, and Board of Education unanimously recognize the great work and devotion of President Cecil O. Samuelson to BYU. Truly, his leadership and influence for good cannot be measured. Likewise, the work and support of Sister Sharon G. Samuelson who has been steadfastly by President Samuelson's side since November 1964, are truly admirable. Sister Samuelson has been a friend and mentor to all associated with this great university, a woman of tremendous talent and ability in her own right. She has been tireless in her support of President Samuelson not only during his years at BYU, but in all that he has been involved with through the years. It is therefore with great appreciation and love that I announce today on behalf of the Board of Education the release of President Cecil O. Samuelson as President of Brigham Young University, effective May 1, 2014. President and Sister Samuelson, we love you and appreciate all you have done during your tenure here. I am also pleased to announce to you today, with the approval of the First Presidency, the Quorum of the Twelve, and the Board of Education, the appointment of Kevin J. Worthen as President of Brigham Young University, effective May 1st. 2014. Brother Worthen is well qualified for this appointment. A graduate of BYU, he went on to receive his Juris Doctor in 1982 from this university and had a distinguished career in private law practice. He then joined the faculty of the BYU Law School in 1987 and was a Fulbright Scholar for one year in Chile. He was Associate Dean of the Law School and then served as Dean from 2004 to 2008. Brother Worthen is the current Advancement Vice President at BYU. He is married to the former Peggy Ray Seeley, 
and they are the parents of three children. On behalf of President Monson and the Board of Education, I know that you join me today in appreciation and love for President and Sister Samuelson. Likewise, we are confident of your continued support for Brother Worthen as he assumes his responsibilities. It is my solemn testimony that the Lord directs the work of his kingdom here on the earth and that he is vitally interested in this institution and has directed these changes. May our Heavenly Father's choicest blessings be with each of us as we help move the kingdom of God forward. I humbly pray in the sacred name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all for being with us today. We really appreciate having you here. Because our time is limited, I am going to jump right into um, the time that we can meet with um, Vice President Worthen. President Eyring has given us an introduction to Vice President Worthen and his wife Peggy, but we'd like to give you the opportunity to get to meet him and ask questions. Um, our time is brief. We do have to leave this room around um, noon for Vice President Worthen to get to another appointment. But we'll have him come forward now and take your questions. And please feel free to just raise your hand um, if you'll uh, state your name and introduce who you're with. That will be very helpful. Thank you. Please go ahead. I am uh, both honored and humbled, as you might imagine, uh, at this opportunity to serve at the university. It's a place I love. I don't consider myself measuring up to those who have preceded me in this, but uh, I have take comfort in the fact that this decision was made by those who I have great confidence in. And uh, I feel very good about the direction of the university and uh, want to thank President Samuelson. That's the one thing I want to make sure I do here for both institutionally for creating the kind of environment that exists here and, and building the foundation on which uh, we can move forward. And personally, just to thank him as a mentor of mine. Uh, there are a few people who have had more influence on me that have been prepared me for this position than has President Samuelson. So, yes. Some very general thoughts. Um, BYU is a different kind of place, as all of you know. One of the ways in which it's different is that the Board of Trustees really sets the overall vision for the university. And so I don't anticipate any radical changes or new directions that are there. Uh, that's been set by the Board of Trustees in the mission statement, and you're all familiar with that. Um, our student body is getting better. Our faculty is getting better. Uh, at the same time, I've found that no one's really given this kind of assignment just to maintain the status quo. And so I think within that framework of what we're trying to accomplish here, that is to provide an environment for these young people to study, uh, to be spiritually strengthened and intellectually enlarged, to use the language of the AIMS, uh, we'll keep looking for opportunities to enhance that experience for them. Lisa Schenker, Salt Lake Tribune. How do you plan to deal with continuing enrollment changes caused by the different mission age? Well, fortunately, we've got a little bit of experience in dealing with that because we have one year under our belt with uh, what turned out to be a smaller than usual entering freshman class with men and a smaller than usual continuing class with women who are out serving missions. And I think it's worked uh, quite well so far. And we would anticipate as they come back, we'll have room for those. We've left a little bit of cushion in there with our enrollment cap to do that. Uh, and I think it will make a difference, um, particularly having reflected on my own experience as a, f as a man, as a freshman, not here at BYU, but somewhere else. Not everybody takes their freshman year all that seriously um, before their mission. My guess is these young men, in particular as missionaries coming back as freshmen, will be more seriously involved in the academic process than the typical 18-year-old would have been. And so I think that will continue to unfold. The, the one other challenge we, we have to think through a little bit is, is housing, because we've relied on 18-year-old freshman men to be in those, that housing. And whether they'll want to be there when they're 20-year-old return missionaries is a bit of an open question at this point. President, can you talk about uh, online education and the pressure in the higher education field about 
Uh, yes, I mean, that's clearly one of the trends in higher education that we um, ought to take advantage of in various ways. I don't think there's going to be any radical new shift towards online education, but I think that's going to be a component of everyone's education in higher education. And we're doing some things already at the university with flipped classrooms and some other things that um, really will enable us to, to evaluate the best way of doing that. And uh, so I don't have anything specific, but it is a trend that we'll, uh, we'll be more involved with. Let me just say this much. I don't think uh, growing up, and she may get, uh, well, I'll just say this much. Growing up as a, a, a non-LDS um, person here in Utah, that she envisioned that at some point she would be in the position she's in right now. So I don't think that was her, her dream when she was in high school. But she's been very supportive and, and would anticipate that would continue. Can you just tell us a little about yourself? Uh, most of us don't really know who you are. So Maybe it's better that way. I don't know. I'm just kidding. Well, I like to say, because it's true, that I was born in a town that no longer exists, uh, Dragerton, Utah, which is now uh, East Carbon City, Utah. And that's still, for many of you, are still wondering where that is. Um, but it's in Carbon County and, and was raised in nearby Price. We moved there when I was five years old. Dragerton? Yeah, D-R-A-G-E-R-T-O-N. And... Uh, but anyway, I had a wonderful upbringing. My father was an educator. He taught math and somewhat to my chagrin was the principal of the junior high when I went there in Price. And uh, so education's always been important to me. And, and, uh, and I'm, uh, the other thing you ought to know about me is I love BYU. I'm a BYU guy through and through. I went here undergraduate. I went here to law school. I've spent more than half of my life here. That prevents wonderful opportunities for me, but it also prevents some challenges in terms of making sure that uh, we have people with a little broader perspective involved in this as well. But that's one thing I can tell you is, as I say, I, I, I love BYU and I'm a BYU guy. Are there any uh, changes you plan to make right off or anything that we're going to see differently with the new leadership there? I don't think right off, again, and certainly there won't be any radical changes. I'm sure in the process of time, in the coming year, we'll evaluate things and there will be changes. But I don't have anything specifically here for, in mind at this point. Uh, for two reasons, again, I think it's, it's, we're in pretty good shape where we're at. And number two, it really is one where the mission's not going to change um, in any fundamental sense at all. And it's really a question of just how do we better achieve that mission. President, go ahead. President can you talk about the last few years as you've been advancement, advancement vice president, how that experience working closely with President Sanderson may inform or may have helped you prepare for this? Have you been looking back on that since getting this? I, I have. Uh, and there may be some thought that uh, some of you may know that the areas I work with include BYU TV and athletics. Um, those are important parts of the university, but I realize that they're not the core of the university. Those uh, are great places. But what I've learned from that is that opportunities will present themselves. And consistent with our message, the, the, the real key is to be looking out over the horizon looking for opportunities that are there. And it's not only in those areas, but I think throughout the university. And then um, acting with great confidence once we know where we want to go. Because there have been some changes, as you may have noticed, in athletics and BYU broadcasting over the past few years. That was not necessarily a conscious plan saying at the outset we've got to change things as much as being responsive to opportunities that presented themselves. And I think that's one of the key um, opportunities and key lessons I've learned is that if you keep focused in on the mission, opportunities will come up that we can enhance what we're doing. Kathy, go ahead. Awesome. Kathy Oliver, Daily Herald. And <coughs> what's the one thing that you worry about the most since you found out? When did you find out you were? I found out about six weeks ago. And to be honest with you, the thing I worry the most about is uh, to use the term that President Hinckley used in one of his speeches is that I might muff it uh, at some point through this. Um, because I really don't uh, consider myself in the same category of those who have served before. And as I say, I take great, great comfort in that those who make, made those decisions, uh, I have great confidence in them. But there's been that thought in my mind about it in terms of being able to, to accomplish the, thing, the things that need to be done. What are you worried about with the youth here, with these kids? I mean, what are your 
I mean, obviously, this is a religious organization. It's a, you're, you're based on faith, and with the world and the way it's going today, um, many of these youth are falling. They're, they're dropping out of school, or they're going other places. What, what are your concerns? The, the concerns really are, for, for those who come here, uh, my biggest concern is that we won't provide as much strength and help as we could. Uh, the ones who come here really are fairly committed and they understand the mission. And I think one of the things we need to do is keep reinforcing that mission about why they're here, not only here at the university, but why they're here on earth. And they are very well prepared. I, I think in many ways, they clearly are our best asset. And um, I think we just need to keep making sure that, that we provide them with every opportunity that they, they need. And, and along those lines isn't, isn't your question, but I've thought we need to be more careful to express appreciation to those who have shaped these youth before they come here. They are extraordinary youth and they do wonderful things and we tout rightly the things that they accomplish while they're here. But it's in large part because they come from homes and from communities where they have uh, had a lot of opportunities and have done a lot of really good things. And so, as I say, I'm not as worried about them. I, I'm, in one sense, I'm worried about them, but it really is providing and meeting what, what we should be providing to them rather than what, what they're going to uh, take from it. Okay. Any more Ted, did you have one more? Uh, yeah, I, will you be continuing, do you know, to serve as an Area 70? Yes, I will be until I'm released. Now, that's, I'm not sure when that is, and that, that decision will be by others, but uh, for right now, I will continue to serve in that calling. And then quickly, do you hope that you'll be the subject of Roosh Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's actually another thing I've thought about. Um, and, 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 and that was sort of organic with the students. There's part of me, and again, I'll just be honest with you, th that I think it's a wonderful tradition. I think it's great, and, and, and I think it really ought to be associated with President Samuelson. And I have nothing against if they want to continue. My fear is that 10 years from now, and after my success, it'll be whoosh somebody else, and they will have lost sort of the special connection they had with President Samuelson. And that really was an organic thing from the students, and I'll leave it up to them. But for my own thinking, um, I just assume they come up with something different in some ways. Not that I care about it as much, but I think as a way of uh, remembering President Samuelson. Well, thank you all. <laughs>